All right. What's up? What's good? Your boy BQ with your Impact Lounge Impact Wrestling Review for April 4, 2024, highlighted by the generational clash between Alex Shelley and Nick Nemeth. Let's see. Do I got anything to run down for you guys first and foremost? I don't believe so. I just um, I watched night one of WrestleMania last night, and I thought I had completely checked out on WWE. And I don't, I don't ever see a scenario where I watch Raw or SmackDown. I just, I can't, um, I, I, I could not imagine caring enough or uh, fitting that into my everyday life. But I, I think I'm going to kind of commit to the pay per view, pay per views going forward. Um, I know it's obviously WrestleMania that that doesn't uh, compare to nothing compares to it regarding the other shows. But I mean, I guess what I found really interesting was that. I don't know a lot about the storylines. I know a little bit because, I mean, how can you not? Everyone's always talking about WWE. If you listen to a wrestling, wrestling podcast, a lot of the time they're going to they're gonna talk about it. But um, I kind of went to, and into it with, excuse me, I went into it with an open mind. And I guess I realized the high degree of storytelling that kind of exists within that company. Where it, TNA does a pretty decent job of it as well. So I'm not... Uh, not discounting what they do, but um, I think that I've been watching, you know, as a, you know, I guess a second or third favorite company, whatever you want to call it, AEW for a while. And now I'm starting to watch like less and less of it because I just, I just not really enjoying it. But I, I, I've sat through these matches that were all 20 minutes long and endless near falls and move, big moves that mean nothing. You know, and I talked about when I went to collision with my kids and and my wife and they, you know, as, as fairly casual fans, they didn't understand who to cheer and to cheer for, who to boo. You know, they were getting, they weren't, they weren't understanding why these fucking ridiculous moves were, were, you know, ending matches. It's just like when you live inside a wrestling bubble and I'll even put myself in that bubble, even though I don't, not really... I don't obsess myself with wrestling, but I'll still throw myself in that bubble. Like you don't realize uh, it's hard to, it's, 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 you just don't realize a lot of the holes in a wrestling match and in a, in a wrestling story. It kind of takes someone, someone's perspective who doesn't watch it on a daily basis, followed on a daily basis to be like, Hey, this doesn't make sense. Or, you know, I see, my family not being able to get involved and invested in matches because they don't understand. Like we can, we can ooh and awe at moves, but the storytelling is most effective with someone who doesn't watch it on a regular basis. You know what I mean? Like we're already invested in the wrestlers. So it's not as important to us, I guess, for us to enjoy a match. Um, But with my family, like they have to, they have to, they have to dig into the story to like really get into it. And, you know, I threw on mania, my the majority of my family at some point throughout the show, we're, we're all watching the show. You know what I mean? And I can't do that with another wrestling company. That doesn't really happen as much. So I don't know. Like I, I just was kind of caught up in, in the stories and uh, I, I might be interested in going forward. I did watch the rumble as well, but I mean, everyone watches that. So I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to, Look into as I as time passes and I enjoy AEW less and less every single week. You know, I think I might start giving these fools a shot again. Like I said, I will not watch Raw or SmackDown. That's not happening. But let's get into TNA, what you guys came here for. Would you come to come to your boy BQ for? I thought the episode was okay. I thought the uh, the production quality was improved. You know, compared to last week, which was was worst of the year, worse than a while. It was improved, but also I've been making a point each and every week. They don't string two episodes in a row that look the same. It hasn't happened once this year. Not once. And that's either for good or bad. Either, you know, they made the adjustments where this horrible looking episode last week did look better. But then you'll have a good episode followed by a bad one. You know, they, there's just never two in a row that look the same. Um. It's amateur, amateur shit. You know, I, I'm not gonna uh, 
harp on it too much, but I I did say when NWA does these does these uh, tapings here in the same arena pretty soon, it's going to be really really telling. So I'm very interested to see what what happens with that. But uh, as I said, I thought the I thought the episode was okay. I I didn't love it, but I wasn't like bored necessarily. I I just thought it was all right. Um, it kicked off. Oh, okay. So I thought they did a very, very, very good job this episode with building the main event. I talk a lot about listening to Eric Bischoff, and I know the majority of you people don't, but he talks about formatting television shows, and that that's kind of one of them. Like, how do you, you know, you know, you um, how do you build to your main event throughout the course of the show? Like you have to dedicate a certain percentage of your show to building towards that main event. You know, you can't just say, hey, this is your main event. It's going to be an awesome match and expect people to stick around just to watch the match. Like you got to kind of give us reasons throughout the show to to tune in. Um, I'm going to throw this out there right away. I didn't even watch the main event, though, because I just didn't care. And I know it's very contradictory to what I just said. But last week when Saban, Saban wrestled uh, Macklin, I was like, I just knew Saban was leaving the company and I didn't care. Even though Steve Macklin, my favorite wrestler, is in the fucking match, I just didn't care. And then I said, but I think I'll watch Nemeth and, and Shelly next week. I think I'll care more about that. Um, but I didn't. I, I Probably five minutes into the match, I just didn't care. So I shut it off. Like, I know Nick Nemeth won, you know, so... But that just me for me personally. I always try to review these shows from the standpoint of someone who's just tuning in or someone who hasn't watched in a while or someone who maybe watches sometimes, not the others. Like I don't I don't really do my reviews thinking about the people who watch every single week, which is a lot of you guys. That's just not the the angle I come from. So I'm still gonna give them props for that for what they did with the video packages, especially the opening one. I'm going to give them props for that. I just personally didn't care. Uh, what I've always said, too, is that I know a lot of you guys don't watch NWA, but when you watch an episode, their opening video package is telling you why you should watch that episode to where impacts is why you should have watched last week's episode. And it's not to say you can't use highlights, but... You just have to use them when it's relevant. So like later in the show with Steph Delander had an interview here, here, here's what happened last week. And it shows her win the match. Like that's more effective than kicking off the show with a bunch of shit that happened before. That's much my personal opinion. I think that that, that opening sequence should be reserved for someone who's tuning in, doesn't know what to expect and needs to be told why they need to watch the episode. So that's just my personal opinion. You guys could disagree, and that's that's perfectly fine. It kicked off also with uh, an old school rules match where you know it's the twenty three twenty four hundred arena, whatever it's called. So you have to go old school. It was good that they did start with Mustafa Ali's entrance because he's the big star here. Rhino's built like an iPhone; like no one really cares anymore. But when you have a really cool open. Regarding Nick Nemeth and Alex Shelley, really cool video package. Drop the intro. You want to show your biggest one of your biggest stars. He really is probably yeah. He is one of their biggest stars by by a landslide. So you want to kick off the show with him. I thought that was excellently done. And then Rhino comes out. They have an old school rules match. Um, it's it's usually hard for me to care about these. He's bringing out trash cans with no liner inside him. <laughs> I know no one cares about that. Just a, a, a stupid joke. Um, that's something that my brother always points out watching wrestling. is like all these trash cans and no liners, you know, how irresponsible. But um, I just didn't care. I, <laughs> you're going to hear me say that a couple couple times this episode. Um, you're not going to put on an old school rules match that I'm like, yo, this was fucking amazing. I, I cared in the sense I, I was I was tuned into the episode enough or not the episode, but the match enough because I really like Ali and what he's doing. And um, I thought Rhino was a good opponent when you obviously got to put Ali up against a bigger opponent at rebellion. 
with and Jake something, I think giving him someone like Rhino early on is okay. I just would have had more interest if it was a regular match. I don't have any interest in Rhino matches, period. Let me just say it like that. But just the minute you're just like, hey, it's old school rules, anything goes. You know, it, it just always bothers me because you have to have rules. Like, what if he brings a flamethrower out to the ring and burns him to death? You know what I'm saying? Like you, you have to have, you have to have rules. <laughs> so, um, obviously, Mustafa Ali won this match. It, the 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 finish was pretty anticlimactic with Rhino going through a table. Um, you know that he clearly positioned. Uh, you knew that Ali was going to get out of the way, and that is exactly what happened. So Rhino went through the table, and Mustafa Ali won the match. Let's get what do, what do we got after this, folks? I can already tell my animals are going to piss me off today. I can hear one cat pissing me off. I can hear one of my dogs outside pissing me off. Like I can just tell. So at the end here, though, they're doing a pretty good job with the cowardly cowardly heel thing from Mustafa. Mustafa you, you know, guys, you know I can't say that name. The cowardly heel thing for Ali and uh you know Jake something coming down it's it just it's a little hard to buy because they've never gotten behind Jake it's always like this star stop star stop and I just don't think this is going to be any different you know but they're 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 telling a pretty little pretty decent little story here for an X division title match and Jake power bombs the security guard aka independent wrestler the next segment I liked quite a bit was Jim Miller interviews Hammerstone in front of the stage. Like, I screenshotted this. I was going to tweet it out. This looked like the TNA of old. You know, it looked really good, really professional. Like, it looked like, even though you couldn't see the audience, like, there was thousands of people there. Like, it just looked so good. And I'm, yeah, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, more of this. Is this what they're going to do now instead of Jim Miller's standing backstage covered in shadows. I said, is this what they're going to do? The answer is no, but more of this, more of this, more of this, more of this. This is, this looks good. This is a professional. Like, yes, some other, uh, some other companies do this a little bit, you know, like Renee is starting to do on AEW a little bit. Um, I feel like WWE hasn't done it in a while. I mean, I haven't watched them in a while, but um, I liked it. I liked it. But <laughs> asking Hammerstone, are you scared of Josh Alexander? Obviously, he's fucking not. Um, I thought I really thought Hammerstone would wrestle Hot Sauce Williams this week, and then Josh would come out after the match. That's where I thought they were going with it. But um, Hammerstone's promo ability right now is, has been excellent. He is such a good addition for this company. Like they really needed this. And then he put the headgear on the cameraman, a.k.a. independent wrestler, uh, much in the way he tried to do it with hot sauce last week and it didn't work, and then put him in the torture rack. This is the most compelling feud I think they've ever come up with jo for Josh Alexander. So they're doing they're doing good work. They are going to wrestle Rebellion. Um, it's a straight-up rubber match. I would have liked to see a two-out-of-three falls match here for this one, but... You know, that's not where they went. Perfectly fine. It's going to be um, a very good match. And and the story leading up to it is is good. Like the two the two times they've wrestled so far was like, okay, cool. Josh is wrestling Hammerstone, but zero story behind it, right? Like they use those matches to build into this. So doing, a, doing an excellent job with that. Rascals come out, um, insult the city of Philadelphia. And they get a match against... Uh, FBI, the new FBI of, well, Guido was out there with Zach Clayton and Ray Jazz. Um, I think I've seen Ray Jazz wrestle on AEW Dark. That's where, that's where I like recall him wrestling against like Dark Order or something like that. He, it, I know it was like a six man tag, um, but that's where I, I do recall him. I, Zach Clayton, I'm very familiar with. Obviously, his AEW work the little bit that he did but um i do watch jersey shore <laughs> so <laughs> uh i thought it was cool you know jay wow does wear aw clothes on the or outfits on the show sometimes like in the background she'll have an aw jacket on so uh i've always liked him 
Uh, and I, I, I hope that he's an addition. I It's hard to watch this segment and say, okay, this new FBI is going to be a part of TNA going forward, or is it an independent act? I, I don't know. It seems like a lot of effort for just like a an independent act, you know, to to reform the FBI. And I know they're in um, Philadelphia, but it just, it just, I don't know. It just seems like a lot of effort. So I'm hoping this is a tag team going forward uh, for the company, but they did lose the rat. They had a relatively short match with the rascals. They lost that Clayton is not a baby face. So that's the other thing too. Like if you have the FBI, I guess Guido was kind of, you know, with his age kind of popular at this point, but, I think he's I think this would be best served as a heel group. So I don't know. I don't know if um we're gonna see him again going forward or if it was just a Philadelphia thing. But uh, you know, Zach Clayton I, to me is someone you want on on a, on a television show. So we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. Um oh yeah, and then uh Myron Reed, the young goat. I hate that term the goat more than anything in this world. LL Cool J came up with GOAT in like 2004. And we're just, every day, you log on social media, everyone's the GOAT, the GOAT, the GOAT. Shut the fuck up. But Young GOAT is cool. It's, it's a cool uh, cool little nickname, but he came out and helped them win the, win the match, even though they didn't really need the help. Uh, but it's good to see, this is what we wanted to see. We were hoping that the Rascals were, were going to remain as a three-man group once they broke away from Macklin. We're kind of like, you know, I, I said the only reason I want this to happen is if Myron Reed is coming back. So, um, looks like he'll be there. When I met him at the uh, in uh, Indianapolis, he had a uh, you know TNA photos for autographs. So, you know, I get the impression he's kind of around for the long run, and they'll be um, they'll be interesting as a as a trio. Uh, what do we get after this? So, another one I actually watched his show in the gym, so I, I wasn't able to take notes. So, I got to go off the. Uh, the website. Oh man! After this, they did uh the video with John Gresham, Jonathan Gresham. I thought was excellent. I tweeted that out, and I I said more of this, more of this, like just like I said with Gia in, doing her interview earlier. More of this. This is. I'm. I've always talked about fucking video packages. Like it doesn't take a lot to just produce something to 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 get you interested into somebody instead of the, them just showing up in the ring or whatever. Like, yeah, TNA does a better job than AEW does of it. But, you know, I just, I just want to see more of this. Like this, this was interesting. I want to see a lot more of that. I don't understand where it was going necessarily, but it's part one. So I'm interested to see where part two goes. They were trying to like, so he had this, the feud with speedball Mike Bailey, which I had like zero interest in. And then, they were kind of t- trying to turn him heel and they were trying to do, do this angle where um, I, I, I don't know how to explain it. Almost like he had it out for the referees because they weren't, you know, because he's so re- uh, used to wrestling under pure rules to where he's talking about there's no integrity within the refereeing anymore and all that. Like they were kind of building towards something heelish and then he just kind of disappeared. So we'll see. I'm pretty sure this is still still heel shit. I could be wrong, but uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing what what he does. I, I like Jonathan Gresham quite a bit. He's actually part of the reasons I thought that they were going to turn Jordan Grace heel at Hard to Kill because Jonathan Gresham was going that direction. They kind of teased them in the in the uh, the uh, call your shot gauntlet a little bit. You know, they're wrestling each other. Like I I don't know. I just started like thinking maybe we're going to see them pair up on screen a little bit. And then Gia Miller and her shadows are backstage with the system. The overall editing of this does look better. It looks sharper. It looks cleaner. Uh, There's still, you're still over editing with the, with the dark colors. And what I've been saying about the, the lighting is that, when you have the lights directly in front of you, it, it casts shadows. But if you have one at a, you know, like 45 degree angles from one, there's one on one side, one on the other, you can still have one in the middle, but you have to have them for multiple angles because what, what that does is it cancels out the shadows. So while the light comes from one side and then the shadows cast, like you, you have, 
I look ridiculous right now. You have a light coming from another angle that comes in and it cancels it out. So that's, I mean, I'm a complete amateur when it comes to lighting and I know this, but she, um, talking to speedball mountain and they're going to have moose wrestle Trent seven, seven. They're going to have moose wrestle Trent seven. Eddie Edwards just beat Mike Bailey. So you're thinking, okay, Trent seven is going to wrestle Brian Myers and win. I don't want them to wrestle period. Um, but it, it, it kind of seemed like, um, that's where they were going to go with it. Instead, they're going to have moose wrestle and moose is going to beat Trent seven folks. So if the system is up to, Oh, how does that build any anticipation for their match at Rebellion? I don't know what's going to happen next week. I just assume the world champion is not going to lose. So we'll see. But I it, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying not to like get too far ahead of myself because they've been showing some, some signs of very good long-term storytelling over the last several months. So I'm trying not to judge shit ahead of time because there's been many times they've they've proven me wrong. You know, so... But right now, I don't have a lot of interest in this feud. If Moose wins, I don't have any interest in the match at Rebellion. Then we got Chris Bay versus Frankie Kazarian. I didn't think this was as good as Frankie Kazarian versus uh, uh, Ace Austin prior to this, but uh, Chris Bay is also very, very good. So um, when I say I didn't think it was as good, that doesn't mean it wasn't a good match. You know, I, th I thought it was excellent. Also, uh, that was just I just preferred the other one a little bit more. Frankie Kazarian made Jane, Jane, excuse me, yeah, Jade. I was saying Jane, Jade announced him as the king of TNA. I really want to see Frankie Kazarian go more forward with this gimmick. I want to see a fucking scepter, a, a crown, all that shit. Because Frankie Kazarian is not a goofy wrestler, so he can he can add this to his gimmick, and it's not going to come off stupid and goofy. Like he makes everything work because he's a pro. So that's what I I kind of hope he does. Uh, they're kind of doing these trio things right now in the impact. So, you know, you can easily give them a couple of lackeys and, and roll with it. Um, but yeah, overall, this was, was, um, pretty good. And they, you know, Ace Austin got ejected from the ring when he, uh, Frank Gazarian was going to hit Chris Bay with a chain. He gave it to Ace Austin, the referee, who's an absolute fucking goof. This Frank dude, Absolute fucking goof on screen, man. Um, he ejects Ace Austin, even though Ace Austin didn't do anything. I know the Frank Kazarian fell on the floor and, oh, this guy hit me. Like, he didn't see it. But whatever, it's wrestling, right? So he ejects him. And then um, Frank Kazarian obviously, obviously wins this match. We knew he was going to win the match. There was no... There was no, in these matches on this episode, there was no like, oh, I wonder who's going to win. Everything was predictable on this show. Every single fucking bit of it. And then we got, um, because word going around the knockouts locker room is that Killer Kelly is no longer her partner after, after two miscommunications. So Masha Edwards is cutting a little promo. Alicia Edwards offers to be Masha's partner. Um, to try to regain the titles back. It's a very TNA thing for to do to tease that Masha's going to have a new partner and then use someone from the fucking roster. Um, but I'm all for this. I want this to happen. I want this to happen. Like I want Alicia to get a damn title um, for the system. They're kind of telling that story. Well, like, Hey, she don't have a title spitfire, even though they're trying to build them up a little bit. Like I, to me, they're still kind of a jobber team. So I hope that Alicia and Masha win the titles back, but I mean, they're hot shotting the shit out of the title. So that's part of the problem too. They're just going back and forth. Every single match they're defended, someone loses them. Um, fortunately, the titles mean almost nothing. So who cares? You know what I mean? It's not like they're doing this with the X division championship. So I'm hoping that is the case that um, Alicia teams with Masha and they beat uh Spitfire for the titles. That was that would be amazing. If you want to give Spitfire the titles at a later date again, cool. Um, I at Rebellion, I see them trying to put together some kind of match where Spitfire defends against everyone on the knockouts division, like they tend to do. And I don't know. You can get away with Masha and Alicia being the champions because Alicia doesn't wrestle that much. So it's not going to be like they're they're going to find ways for her to defend the title. Like she'll be like Stephanie McMahon when she was the world champion 
back in the day. Like she never had to fucking defend it. She just walk around, walked around with it as a prop. And um, it would be interesting how you factor Masha into this. Like she's not going to join the system. That would be insane. But maybe she does. Maybe she does. That actually would be super cool. I just don't see that happening. So we'll see. I mean, common sense probably says Spitfire retains the titles. But if the goal is to try to get a, a title on Alicia Edwards, this is the way to do it. And then we, I fast-forwarded through con, PCO, monsters, ball shit. Um, we're going to see them right after we saw Old School Rules. Um, and I think the week before that, we got like no disqualification. No, as long as no disqualification. I, I mean, I know PCO and Con had one, but I think we had a garbage match on that Impact a couple weeks ago too. I don't know. They're just we're just right back to this shit, street fights and all that shit. I just I can't imagine very many people care. And then we got um, Ash by Elegance versus Zaya Brookside. I love. Zaya Brookside, and I'm really enjoying Ash by Elegance too. A lot of people don't like her, um, but I think she's getting good heel heat. I just, I just think sometimes as wrestling fans, we just feel like we have to like everyone on screen, and that's not the case, you know. Um, if you don't like her, cool, but I, I do think she's doing, doing pretty good work. And um, Zaya Brookside, I keep saying this, I think she's going to be a massive babyface for this company one day. Uh, met her in Indianapolis much prettier in person and she is i mean this girl is tiny you can tell on tv she's small but she she is small but i really think her time is going to come to where she's just a massive baby face for this company and this match was not good at all i was looking forward to it because i like both the girls but this was not a good match and the finish was very very bad i didn't mind the beginning i thought the acting with the personal concierge, whatever he calls it, uh, the Iceman. I thought, I always think he does a good job. Um, and Zaya Brookside, she had a little speaking role, and it came off natural. It wasn't it wasn't bad acting like you would tend to get in kind of these situations. Uh, so I, I had interest in the match. It's just that the match was not good. I think they're, they were in a weird place here where they're like, we don't really want Zaya to lose, but we don't want Ash to lose. You know, they, they were unsure who to make strong here. So they tried to make it so Zaya still looked strong. I, I don't know where they were going with it, but it's, it just wasn't very good. And the finish at the end, uh, the champagne to the eyes. I would imagine, I've never had champagne in my eyes before. I would imagine it does burn a little, but I mean, they, they milked that shit like, like ash litter on fire. And, you know, whatever roll up move she did at the end, it, j it just wasn't very good. But I still like these girls. Ace Austin and Chris Bay were backstage there, teasing again, breaking up this team. Nobody wants to see them break up. Like they can achieve and chase individual accolades like the Motor City Machine Guns just did and still remain a team. I understand they were teasing the Motor City Machine, Machine Guns breaking up, but that was. That was after Shelly lost his title and the whole throw your towel. Like the story was very different. They still remained a unit for, I mean, the seven, eight months that they were co champions. So it's just weird. I don't understand why they would do this. But again, I'm trying not to get ahead of myself with some of these stories uh, because the, the storytelling long term wise has been pretty solid. So I'm just trying to, I'm trying to pump the brakes a little bit, but. And, I just don't want to see them break up. Even though I'm not a big fan of theirs, I'm still a fan of TNA and I'm a fan of them building up a fucking tag team division that's worth a damn. So that's why I don't want to see this. Rich Swan and AJ Francis came in as first class. They're almost teasing like Chris Bay joins this group. I don't know if that's where they I don't know if that's what happens. I would be down for it. I would love Chris Bay to team up with Rich Swan cuz AJ Francis is not going to wrestle on a consistent basis in this group. I'm pretty confident in saying that. I think they're going to continue with the Suge Knight style character. And right now he is Rich Swan's tag team partner. I just, I have a hard time believing that Rich Swan doesn't get an additional partner at some point. You know what I mean? So I would add, um, God, what the hell is his name? Jack Price of this group. I've been saying that about any group of black wrestlers that they have on TNA, but I would add him as a as a 
a lackey. Absolutely. But they probably won't do that. I don't think they're going to build a stable too big, but I just would be shocked if AJ Francis was the, the traditional partner for rich Swan going forward. I just, I just do not see that happening. So I guess there's a chance Chris Bay does hop over, but I don't think it happens now. Like it would be a, a pretty quick breakup for these guys who have been together for quite some time. It's kind of like, um, fucking MK ultra who, you know, together for over a year, then have two, two little miscalculations and then they break up. You know, we don't need to see that with the guys as well. Gia Miller and her shadows are backstage with uh, Matt Cardona and Steph double D lander. And this is what I was saying earlier is that they showed the highlight of her being coming number one contender. That to me is just better uses use of highlights rather than playing them for fucking two minutes to start off the show in slow motion. You know, C4 spike and a kick out. That Zaya Brookside um, match with with Ash by Elegance, I think Tom set a record for I knock kick outs. Anyway, um, Steph Delander's not going to win at Rebellion. Let's just throw that out there right now. Um, next week, they're going to do a Jordan Grace and Steph Delander contract signing. Who the fuck cares about that? There's no heat in this feud. Crazy Steve's going to defend against Laredo Kid, one of the most random mat- title matches they have done in a while here. Should be fun. Should be a cool match. They had Laredo Kid speak for the first time in eight years the other day. And um, I completely forgot that he was a number one contender for the Digital Media Championship. Completely forgot. He was supposed to wrestle at a like sacrifice or something, but he got hurt because he won the like a six way match or something. I believe I just know he was supposed to wrestle for the title, but the title means so fucking little that when they just said Joe Hendry was wrestling, like I didn't I say, okay, he's wrestling for a digital media championship. You know, I didn't even really think about it. And then the, the main event was Nick Nemeth and Alex Shelley. Obviously um, the match started off so slow because Alex Shelley has these, uh, methodical, you know, his storytelling is very like methodical, working a body part. It was so slow to begin to begin though. I just didn't watch it. So I'm sorry. That makes me like a bad fan. There's probably a lot of you guys like, yo, this match was off the chain, you know, but this would not have been a generational clash had Alex Shelley not just been the world title. This would have just been Nick Nemeth wrestling a tag team wrestler. You know, um, but but Alex Shelley did when he won the title, they did did build him up. You know what I mean? Like you want someone to hold a title and them to be taken more seriously when they lose it. Kind of like what they didn't do with Rich Swan. So, you know, the title did build Alex Shelley up. But I just I just had a hard time sitting through this match. And and when I know what the outcome is going to be, I know one of the guys is leaving. And as I said last week, I'm not going to miss, you know, um, Tom Haddon with Shelly and Saban. What's some of the other names? Slamovich. Some of those uh, other last names he uses. That's annoying. Um, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm good without, with uh, not hearing that again. So, yeah, Nick Nemeth, I didn't even have to scroll to know that he won this match. There wasn't a single match on this show that wasn't predictable as shit. And, you know, the last couple of weeks were pretty good, especially two weeks ago. Like two weeks ago, I claimed was the best episode of the year. Some people were saying last week's episode was the best episode of the year, even though it looked so bad. But this was just in the middle of the pack. It wasn't a bad episode. It was just there. It was just it almost felt like a throwaway episode to me, but they did advance a couple things. So I don't want to call it a throwaway, but I think I think it was just a decent episode that they tried to, you know, have a good main event for. Um, but they did do a very good job building up to the main event throughout the show. I, I will give them respect for that. It just didn't work for me, but I'm a different kind of fan than most people who watch TNA. I'm like brutally honest when I get on here. Usually a, a podcaster is going to sit here. Oh, I watched every moment because that's my my job as a podcaster. Like if I don't want to see something, I don't. <laughs> so 
Uh, I guess I'm a little different in that sense, but solid enough episode. Uh, I try to keep this episode a little quicker because it's like Mania weekend, so I don't know how much people care about TNA right now, but um, you know, hopefully we get a really good episode next week, and we'll dig we'll dig into it, and hopefully we get some good TNA news this week to talk about. I got an episode or an episode with a little podcast coming up pretty soon about Digital Media Championship, and uh, you know, just the continued uh, the continued failures of this belt. And uh, it ties into something WWE is doing. So that'll do it for your boy, BQ. Thanks for tuning in. I am out. Peace.